Hello, everyone. I have a confession to make. My name is Adith, and I am an addict. Now, what is your immediate reaction? I'm sure that you view me with less regard than you did a minute ago. But that's natural. This is because we tend to associate addiction with substance abuse, such as drugs. But I'm actually here to talk about technology, those ubiquitous tools and gadgets that we use in our everyday lives that bring so many conveniences that we have no choice but to become hooked. By the nods of some of the audience members, I can see that I'm not the only addict here. So how do we become into these tech aficionados? Can we ever become sober? More importantly, do we even want to become sober? Well, our addiction didn't begin an hour or even a year ago, but from the instant we walked onto this earth and will continue on till we take our final steps off. Technology is not only a part of our lives, but for most of us here, it is our lives. So what does that make technology? A drug? Whoa, that's a wild accusation. Cocaine, heroin, marijuana, all drugs from which we receive an increase in serotonin levels that gives us the so-called high. This unholy trinity has caused the ruin of countless lives who seek this altered state of consciousness. Indeed, the abuser feels as if he cannot live outside this state, and while on it, the world is a beautiful place. The lights, the colors, and there's no more problems. Similarly, technology helps us to augment and intensify our experiences of the world around us. It helps us see. From the moment we wake up to the second we fall asleep, we are texting, toasting, troubleshooting, all for the drug technology. Some of us become so engrossed in the substance that we start to forget the most important part about us. We forget quality face-to-face -face communication. We forget the human touch. Indeed, when our technology is taken away from us, we are left unable to function. What happens for one day even if our national securities were down? Those high firewalls were burst. Those missile systems were all gone. Our artillery machines disappear. Would you be able to sleep at night knowing your family was safe? I wouldn't be able to. And all these scenarios show that our over-dependency on technology are bad. And that the comparison I make between technology and drugs is quite illustrative. The fact of the matter is, there is no comparison at all. Just a metaphoric one. Antoine de Saint-Exupéry, a French philosopher, he once said, the machine does not isolate man from the great problems of nature, but plunges him further into them. Positively, isn't this the feeling we get when we use technology to solve one of our problems? When we go to the hospital and we see a old man who can finally walk on his two feet again due to a small implant in his knees, the smile we see on his face, the feeling we see in his families, the ambience created. Don't we just feel as if for one second the problems are gone? For one second, pure bliss. Imagine this 10 times more. Imagine this 100 times more. That's what technology has given us. It's given the opportunity for a man without legs to somehow have bionic legs. It's given the opportunity for someone who's in a coma to wake up. To someone who had no chance of survival, today is walking among us. So I'm not here to bash that technology is the cause of human demise. No, just the contrary. Technology, in all its many forms, is an indis indispensable part of our daily lives, used wisely, moderately, and for the betterment of society. There's no telling where we can go. Space is the final frontier? That's what I heard last time. But today, I say technology is the final frontier. We wake up, we use our phones. We go to sleep, we're on our computers. This has allowed us to expand our horizons it has allowed us to see. So technology, our savior. Technology, our protector. Technology, our redeemer. 
My name is Adit Gandhi. I am an addict, but proud to be one. Thank you. Thank you for your speech, Adit. What do you think was the first aspect of technology that we became addicted to? Was it perhaps electricity? I think it goes way before that. As soon as we made the discovery of fire, we were hooked. As soon as that moment, just imagine it. You could have food and you could bake it and then preserve it for countless days. You could then survive and go on trips just when you were a caveman. That discovery changed our very existence and perspective on life. Thank you. For you, what is the difference between being dependent on technology and being addicted to technology? That's a crucial question, and I thank you for it. Dependency, well, that's when we use technology in a positive way. That's when technology is, we are using it to create and reproduce our thoughts. A best example, computers. We can use Microsoft Word, Adobe Photoshop, Dreamweaver to create websites and documents to express our ideas to show the public. That would show our dependency to technology. It helps us say our ideas. Now addiction. That's when we forget there's a line. That's when we forget that there's limits. An addiction would be when you just sit in front of a computer and you're gaming all day long. You forget to eat, sleep, meet your parents, do anything. Just make sure your avatar is okay. You forget that you have a life and people are there to care about you. Thank you. What, what type of technology are you so hooked on that you would never be able to get rid of it, of the addiction? So a technology that I would not be able to yeah. get rid of. Yeah. That is an obvious answer. Electricity. I can't imagine going to school on a horse for me, I'm too scared of animals in the first place, so that's a no-no. Secondly, imagine when I'm getting to school to write on a, with a scribe and a papyrus piece of paper. That's almost impossible for me. Electricity has allowed me to go on the internet, to use Word, to use the chairs we're sitting on, the plastics that we're using. It's even helped the economy so much. Could you imagine the world for one second even without petroleum, without steel, without the stock market that we are using right now, we wouldn't be in this developed state that we're on right now. We would be in some primitive state still quabbling around about this territory still mine. I do not want to leave it. Electricity has helped us develop to the next level. Thank you. What would you say or do to these people who care more about their avatar than their real life and their parents, etc.? What would you say or what would you do to cure them, as it were. I really want to acknowledge you to say the word cure, because it is a disease. People characterize it as, oh, it's something that you just get rid of, but no, it's a disease. We develop a psychological dependency to this avatar, and the best way to cure it is I say, go cold turkey. Just take the computer away. That's what we do with cigarettes, that's what we do with drugs, that's what we do with even physical dependencies, and that's the thing we should do with it as well. Korea, the forefront of this, they've seen the most worst cases and they've cured it with the same technique as I've just mentioned. Thank you. Thank you. Is there a telltale sign that tells us when we need to become sober? I think the telltale sign is when you stop eating, meeting your friends, and just stop being a human anymore. You're not a slave. The computer is not a slave to you, but you're a slave of the computer. That's when we know the line has been crossed it's time to make a step before things get too worse. Um, what do you think about people like the Amish who give up on technology? Well, modern technology because they use carrots, etc. But carriages, but how do you feel about them? I do not want to abuse or even insult the Amish at all since they're a people who have their own rights, but I feel they're missing out. Because when I go to the cinema and I use that machine to pour that Coke, boy, does it taste good. Going to the restaurant and ordering some great food, 
I need to do that. I need to use those technologies. The microwave, oh my God, my mind has been blown. That's it, the microwave. I can't imagine life without it, and I just think that for us, economically speaking, the PPC curve is our production possibility curve. And we need to expand it as much as we can. The Amish are just making it smaller and smaller and smaller. That's an inefficiency in the economy. I don't think I need that.